Hello, this is Ben Baxter with Accent Software, bringing you another video in our manufacturing segment for Dynamics NAV. Hopefully you've enjoyed some of our other segments that we have in place uh, for learning more about what the Dynamics NAV product can offer your manufacturing business, or uh, if you're watching some of our uh, more horizontal focused videos, you've seen some of the, the great features that are available in the product. Today we're going to be looking at the manufacturing process, so how do uh, time, output, and consumption of materials all happen as they relate to a manufacturing production order. So with that being said, we're going to take a quick look at an item just so you can understand what we're working with. Uh, the production order that we created was based on this subassembly uh, make to stock item. So I'm going to go ahead and drill into it and come down to its replenishment tab. On here you can see that a production order is what is used to replenish the system. Uh, it is make to stock and it's based on a fixed reorder quantity. And we're going to jump into the, the routing and the components, but I'm going to start with the, the bill of material for this item. Uh, it only has six, that's a, just a small sample data set, um, and they're all set up to be backward flushing method. Now with that, that means as the output happens, whether that's for a particular operation or for the finished good operation, it will consume these components in their specified quantities based on however many I'm outputting. So in this case, it's a quantity per of one. So if I produce 10, it's going to consume 10 of these products. If I, cons if I produce 100 of the uh, sub-assembly make to stock item, it will consume 100 of each of these components. Now at which point the output happens, whether it's on an earlier operation or the final good, uh, final assembly operation, will determine which components get consumed. So I have in my uh, bill of material here a routing link code of 100 set to three of the items. I'm going to go ahead and jump over to my routing and show you that I have a routing link code of 100 assigned to the assembly department, which is operation 20, for this product. So when I consume, or sorry, when I output quantity on the assembly department, that will consume the components that are linked using that routing link code to the assembly department. So uh, we're going to go ahead and walk through that scenario. So to do that, I'm actually not going to go to a production order, although I will show you that I have one set up in the system, uh, and the item and the order number is 301013. Now the reason I wanted to show you this is because I've already posted some entries to it. So you can see I've got some time to the machine department, uh, closed out that operation, so the next one is the assembly department, uh, and, some con and some consumption already done, but we're going to go ahead and show you um, some more consumption for that. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my roll center again, and I'm going to jump down to my journals. Now I'm going to go to the output journal. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a one-step process. So in my output journal, I'm going to go ahead and put in my order number, the 301013, and I'm going to say explode routing. So what that's going to do is pull in the remaining operations. The uh, operation 10 was already finished, so these are my remaining operations. I'm not going to worry about the other two for right now, so I'm going to go ahead and delete them. I don't have to worry about that because the uh, other operations, they're not marked finished, they will be brought in every time I explode that routing. We're going to go ahead and put in some runtime. We'll just say uh, we ran for, uh, let's say, 500 minutes. And we're going to do an output quantity of 100. So I'm not sure if those match up well with, with what is set up on that routing. But what I'm doing is I'm outputting 100. I know that three of my components have a routing link code assigned to operation 20 with a quantity per of 1 to 1. So I'm doing two steps here. I'm consuming 500 minutes of cost for a particular work center and I'm consuming 100, a quantity of 100 based on the output quantity of 100 for the components that are linked to this operation. Both of those are going to happen in the same step. Now you can separate those if you choose and that would be through the flushing method whether it's manual, forward, backward or some subset of that. Uh, 
Uh, and I'm also manually keying in this time. If this was being posted through a time collection system, a barcode scanning uh, solution, I am not uh, showcasing any of that today. This is just behind the scenes how you could do this manually. Um, but there are several other uh, products and um, barcode scanning solutions to automate all of this process. But if I'm just manually keying it in, I'm going to go ahead and post my uh, uh, my output, so my capacity time of 500 runtime minutes, as well as output quantity of 100, which will then trigger my consumption. So we're going to go ahead and post this. And the uh, lines were successfully posted. Now how do I troubleshoot this? How do I know uh, what I just did? So I'm going to go back to my release production order and we're going to again look at the value entries. So the val value entries are going to show me everything. Uh, so we're going to look down here. This is what I've just done, the last uh, component parts and the uh, actual time associated. So you can see the valued quantity 500, that is the 500 minutes uh, assigned to this assembly department. And then we're going to look at the items. So uh, these are the three items that we had linked to our assembly department. And you'll see the quantity of 100. Now because my output was 100 and my quantity per was 1, it's a one-to-one -one relationship. So I output 100, that means I consumed 100 of each of these goods. What you will notice is it didn't consume all six of the raw materials associated with my bill of material. It only uh, consumed the material linked using that routing link code to the operation that we completed or the operation that we processed some output for. And then it gives me my uh, cost per unit, so whatever the dollar values are for the different components, as well as my dollar value for uh, the time spent, uh, so I can get my actual cost amount. So that's filling in my statistics, uh, but that is the uh, process here where we've now output some amount, and we have consumed goods based on that output amount. Now I've done this here manually uh, as far as recording the time that we uh, output, so the, the 500, and then uh, I do want to emphasize that that can all be run through a barcode scanner, uh, capturing time and, and posting it here to the production order itself. Uh, but that is a, a quick look at it, hopefully that gives you enough information. Um, the last thing I'll cover on this is if I go to the, uh, the items that we consumed. Uh, I want to look it up one more time so I make sure I get the right items. Uh, but we're going to see for uh, 80105, 201, and 212, and I'll just go to one of those. Uh, we're going to go ahead and scroll down to 801, 05. Okay. Uh, for this item, if I go ahead and look at the ledger entries for this item, uh, what we're going to see is that the uh, consumption has happened. So here's the entries uh, that we've consumed. Uh, so a quantity of negative 50, that was my earlier posting, and a quantity of 100, that was the posting we just did in this video. Um, so of my 200 that we had on hand already, uh, we've gone ahead and consumed 50, and we've consumed 100. So that's giving us our net supply of 50 remaining. So hopefully that's uh, a good understanding for you of uh, some of the workflow process here. Um, but I, I'm able to do several steps within one. Uh, if I was doing a finished good or the final good step on that production order, that would also create the positive entry into my uh, finished good inventory available for sale uh, or for a specific order depending on how you uh, reserve the, the product. So hopefully that's a, uh, a good high level overview for you. Uh, always follow up with us with whatever questions you have. This is a, a very generic video, so uh, hopefully you can make a connection to your business and your business type and process. Uh, if not, reach out to us. I love to talk to people. I love to explore their way of using the system and, and how it can best be used to align to your business needs and make sure you're getting the, the information you want out of the system. So with that, uh, I wish you a good day, and I appreciate you watching this video. Thank you very much.